In this video, we'll be investigating the ideal gas law equations and what happens if you hold, for example, pressure constant or volume constant or temperature constant. By the way, I put this one here because it's so funny. <laughs> ideal gas PV equals NRT, which is actually one we're going to need later. I like this ideal. <laughs> so first of all, these gas laws actually came from empirical experiments, which means, you know, if you actually ran an experiment, you know, before they actually knew the exact numbers, they still knew, like scientists actually still knew, though, that the, this ratio, so P times V over T, they knew it was some kind of constant. So this is actually done, you know, experimental. You can actually figure this out. So you can say, all right, okay, this is really important. So we're going to have this on our data booklet as well. So now let's just make sure we remind ourselves what's P. It's a pressure, which is in pascals. V is a volume, which is in meters cubed. And we have temperature, which should be in, uh, whoops, not T, Kelvin. All right, so that's what we need there. So let's look at then what really happens. Instead of putting in the ideal one, because we'll, we'll have it later. Don't worry, we'll define it right here. But I want to go back to uh, this one right here. So what happens then if we're, if we're keeping PV over T constant? What happens if we have constant volume? That's the first one I want us to look at here. So what happens if you do this? Some people call it isochoric. But actually, as far as our exams go, you just need to know what happens with constant volume, constant pressure, and constant temperature. Okay, so we're going to have special words for these right here, but they, they don't matter as much here in this case. Let's keep in mind. Here we go. So with constant volume, what happens then? Well, if you look at this equation here, PV you know, equals some constant times T, if the volume is kept constant, that means we're going to just kind of ignore it. Can you see then that P and T then become um, proportional? So I'm going to say then that P the pressure is then proportional to the temperature. Does that make sense? Because if V is constant, then pressure is equal to some number, which I don't really care about, times T. So that means then if I have a graph of pressure versus temperature, if it's proportional, and well, then we're going to assume we're using Kelvin, that means that we're going to have a graph like this, then P versus T should look like this, should pass through the origin, something like this, which means then as T, as the temperature goes up, what happens then? That means the pressure goes up. Now this could also be seen, if you remember your equations for pressure, we have a pressure equation for ideal gases that it's one third times the density of the gas times the average speed of these particles squared. So what that really tells you is if the temperature went up, remember the speed would go up, and if the speed went up, that means the pressure goes up. So you can also see it from here, but it's seen empirically, at least, from this. So that's called constant volume. Some people call it isochoric. doesn't matter. Um, let's look at this next one now. What about constant pressure? What happens then? Well, I'm just going to write it like this. So PV equals some constant times T. I'll write that for all of them, actually. So PV equals something, which you don't care about, times T. All right, so if I have something like this, what's going on now? Well, if I've got the pressure being constant, that means this right here is ignored. And that means, can you see then, it relates then that OV is rep proportional to T. So that means the volume then is proportional to the temperature. That means if I did a graph of volume versus temperature in Kelvin, then we would expect this to be linear as well, like this, like this. So that means then we could conclude, hey, that means as temperature goes up, what happens then? The volume goes up. Okay, so that what it, that explains that as you raise the temperature, then you cause this gas to expand. Hopefully that makes sense also because, you know, you increase the pressure. So hopefully this stuff all sort of makes sense, at least intuitively. I think these are the key sort of pieces you can gain from this. This is the piece you can gain from this one. And finally, we have constant temperature, also known as uh, isothermal. And what happens then? Well, if we've got the temperature being constant, this one here, we ignore it. Well, I want to get V on the other side. So can you see then I can say then that the pressure is proportional to, and if I move the V on the other side, it's 1 over V. So it's going to be pressure is proportional to 1 over V. That means if I have a graph of pressure versus the volume, what happens then? Um, well, you have to think about what happens with a, a 1 over X graph. If you remember those, um, this is going to be a graph that goes something like this. It's a curve like this. If you have like y equals 1 over x, then this is the kind of graph it does. It goes kind of like this. It's not exact, but something like that. So this is then why we can say, hey, as the volume goes up, the pressure goes down. We can say it like that. Right? So as the volume goes up, 
the pressure goes down. Or you can say the opposite, right? As the pressure goes down, the volume goes up. I mean, you can also state it that way. I mean, each of them can be explained in the opposite way as well. But I think this is, you know, the one of the key ones. In other words, these are inversely proportional. Hopefully that also makes sense, right? If you push something, you know, um, if, if the pressure, sorry, if the pressure goes down in something, if there's less pressure acting on it, it should make sense and its volume then can increase. You know this if you've ever seen videos, if you like a hot air balloon or something like that, or some of these, you know, balloons, they, they take up into really, really high altitude. As the pressure up, you know, as you get close to, closer to space, so to speak, as, you know, the pressure decreases, then the volume of that gas actually expands. So that's a neat one there. So where before we were looking at empirical ones, these are ones you can do with experiments to figure these out. Now we can actually write the ideal gas law equation. It goes PV equals N times R times T. I'll write it down first of all. And we have another version of it as well. So it goes PV equals N K B times T. So let's define these right here. And let's just look at these. Do you notice we still have PV equals something times T? So we've got this sort of conversion. We've got this N times R must be the same thing as capital N times N, uh, sorry, times KB. So this is actually an important piece here as well. So let's look at all these different variables. First of all, pressure is in pascals, V volume, which is in meters cubed. We've got temperature, which should be in Kelvin. Okay, N is the number of moles. That's what this lowercase n is. Um, R is a constant, so just 8.31. And capital N is the number of molecules, and KB is the Boltzmann constant. So this is just relating, so you either use PV equals NRT or PV equals NKBT. And just keep in mind, NR is just the same as NKB. Now hopefully this right here, all at least it, it puts a number to it. Before we said it was equal to a constant. Well, now we know what the constant is. It's NR or it's NKB. So how does this uh, apply to real life? Well, lots of ways, right? Like if you're going into a pool, it explains you know why things that are under a lot of pressure that they can squish, why the volume is smaller. Um, it can explain, you know, because that's, you know, as the pressure goes up, the volume goes down. Lots of things. I have a personal experience with this when I was in the military. We were learning uh, how to handle high altitude. So what they would do is they would put you in this box right here, and you'd basically, you seriously end up playing patty kicks. You're actually going like this here, and it shows your hand-eye coordination goes way down as you simulate high altitude. The idea, of course, was that um, if you're in the military or if you're in any plane and you're way up high, if you lose cabin pressure, if you lose the extra oxygen that you're breathing, then you're going to become a total idiot. You become like as drunk as you've ever been almost instantly. Like you lose, really, you're an idiot. This explains why people make dumb mistakes when they're way up high, like on Mount Everest or on high mountains. It explains though, why if you're flying an airplane, why you need to be really, really careful to recognize those signs to go down immediately if something's wrong. Now, how do they do this? They actually put us in this box right here, like this big room, and they would have us breathe you know, oxygen so that way you know, our brains work properly. And what they wanna do, they wanna simulate high altitude. So how do they really do that? Well, I mean, you could just take us in a plane, but that's too expensive. So instead they just take the room and they just lower the pressure. Now let's assume then that the temperature was constant. Okay, so let's say constant temperature. Let's just assume this right here is uh, isothermal here. Let's assume it's constant temperature. Then what happens? Well, if you lower, if you keep the temperature the same and the pressure goes down, what happens to the volume? The volume goes up. Now, what do I mean by volume here? This is super gross, but it's it's true story. It's a bit embarrassing, but here we go. When I first got into this room, I remember thinking like, oh God, it smells. It smells so badly of farts. And I didn't quite figure this out. So I was young, I was excited to be doing this. So I just got in, I was like, oh God, someone like must have made a mess in their pants. I don't know what happened. This is like right when I first got in the room and I was wondering why. And see if this makes sense why that would be. Because we get into this thing, we start breathing our oxygen, everything's fine. They lower the pressure so you can feel like your ears are popping and everything, but you're breathing, you're fine. But of course, what happens then if they lower the pressure, the volume, you've got gases inside you, right? You've got you know air that you're breathing, but you've got gases in your <laughs> lower intestines too. When that pressure goes down, the volume of your gases wants to go up. That means your gases want to escape. When they turned on that machine and the pressure's going down, everyone in this room is burping and farting simultaneously. You're just like burp, fart, just everything just kind of comes out. That's why it smelled really bad. <laughs> 
But what does this do for you in real life? I mean, it does explain, though, at least why, you know, how pressure and volume and temperature are related. So I think that's why it's still an important, and even though it's a dumb example here, this equation right here is very, very important. PV equals NRT, the real one, but also, of course, the empirical one, which just shows how these ones are here work. I think that's really key to knowing how this here works, that the pressure and the volume and the temperature, how they're related when there's an ideal gas.